Hello and welcome to the Mobiletics patch 1119 high low tier list. We had a follow up to the previous patch with a bunch more tweaks and changes as we move towards worlds. Let's get stuck straight in. First off the top lane in the god tier we have Camille, Aurelia and Riven and the S tier we have Fiora. So a range of changes in the top lane. First and foremost after Renekton lost his extended stun on his W which made him such a hotly contested pick in pro play, Riot has given him back some strength in a shorter lockout on himself when using his W and a larger amount of base HP and HP per level. Necton losing his stun was massive, but this buff helps him function better as that mid-game powerhouse in teamfights, and so has put him back on this list for now. Mordekaiser has got a solid buff with his E cooldown being reduced by 4 seconds of rank 1. Since you max is second, you'll get a lot of value out of this over the entire laning phase. The E not only allows you to apply pressure in trades, but can also be used backwards to pull enemies away when you're trying to evade a gank. This is a really solid buff for the eye in Revenant. We saw some little tweaks with some buff towards Poppy's passive CD and Sion's base W shield. Nice changes, but ultimately not super impactful. Cho'Gath got a 1 second cooldown reduction on his Q. It's nice as you are pretty reliant on it for trading, but this won't drastically change things for Cho and there's still a bit too many matchups who can bully him out of top lane. Aatrox got a really solid buff to his W. It's now 6 seconds lower cooldown at rank 1, and since it's a skill you max last, this is a ton of value pretty much for the entire game. There's also a new build that's been used by one trick ponies and most recently by Nuggery while playing in EUS as prep for worlds. He builds Zerelda's second, it's more glass cannon than Sterax but you do a huge amount of damage with the armor penetration and the slow means even if you don't connect with your initial sweet spot you'll easily be able to land subsequent ones thanks to the slow. Another big factor is the ability haste it provides compared to Sterax allowing you to more frequently get your combo off. Kenan got a nerf on the current patch, reducing his Q damage and AP ratio but ultimately this doesn't slow him down too much. Often in lane your opponent will just play behind the minion wave to avoid you frequently connecting with your Q anyway. The main focus for Kenning is just farming up for your first item and looking to join team fights. Your ult is incredibly effective at dictating fights, particularly if you're able to find flanks or have your flash available. Each item you pick up is a big spike. Rocket Belt gives you magic penetration and the active to add damage and mobility. Zonya's allows you to survive when ulting and Void Staff's penetration really bolsters your damage. Aegok got some solid buffs in 11.18 and is a great spot for handling a lot of the melee bruises in the top lane. Your shotgun legs do huge amounts of damage and once you have your W max you can shred anyone who gets in range. Aegok's main issue can be when it comes to team fights against longer ranged opponents, you really struggle to get into your effective range. It's often important to find flanks or have allies with engage to help give you time to get in position to wreak havoc. Your ult is a massive tool, not only for finishing targets but also the AoE fear can dictate fights when placed well. Onto the jungle, we don't have any champs in the god tier, and the S tier we have Kha'Zix, Kindred, Lee Sin, and Xin Zhao. In the jungle we saw Kiana have a clear buffed again, as a result she's in a pretty good spot. There is definitely a high skill cap on the champion, but when she's able to snowball she can absolutely take over a game. There was some buffs to Gragas and Sejuani, but they didn't make too much of a difference, and neither is in a really strong spot at the moment. Echo's doing really well in the jungle right now. With his buffs to his clear, he now shreds the jungle, allowing him to farm up till he's really powerful. He's got a lot of burst and great survivability, and becomes a frustrating threat to deal with later in the game. The downside to Echo is in the early game, he doesn't hold up well on skirmishes against some of the stronger early junglers like Lee Sinners and Zhao, so it's worth avoiding trying to face them head on. Ideally, Echo is best served when you have laners with good CC setup to keep them in your W till you can get in range for the stun. Thanks to the clear buffs, Talon is on par with most junglers right now. The big strength of the pick in the jungle is the insane mability that allows you to find gank angles on the level of Rek'Sai, going over walls and avoiding commonly warded spots to get behind your targets. The optimal build at the moment rushes Gore Drinker as you still do more than enough damage to one shot squishy targets, but the extra bulkiness combined with how slippery you are makes it extremely difficult to take you out. Ideally you want to use your E to find flanks or different angles into teamfights. Kindred has strong early skirmishing from a base damages in 2v2s and 3v3s and is really potent at bursting down a single target and finding a swift numbers advantage to win out the fight. You do struggle with champions who are able to get on top of you easily as your ideal play pattern is to kite your opponents with your mobility while tearing through them. Kindred has tons of damage in the later stages and becomes a really dependable carry once you get some items. The key thing is getting there, getting your stacks and avoiding getting punished by strong early junglers like Xin Zhao or Lee Sin. On to mid and in the god tier we have Kastin and Kiana, and the S tier we have Ari, Akshan, Anivia, Galio, Katarina, Leblanc, Silas, Syndra, Twisted Fate and Zillion. Mid saw a few tweaks and adjustments. Ryze got hit with a longer cooldown as E and a lower AP ratio as Q. Ultimately Ryze has always had an atrocious win rate in solo queue and this won't help him out, but in the right hands he's still a very effective pick. Fizz had the 1118 changes reverted and then a lower cooldown on his E, but ultimately he just hasn't been holding up too well in higher elos. Galio and Akali changes are really minor and haven't shifted things up too massively. 
It's fist up Kiana, and she's doing absolute work in the mid lane. Her skirmish potential is hard to match, and she has an insane amount of burst. At the moment, the popular build is to rush Yomu's Ghost Blade. Since it was buffed, it gives a bunch of great stats for assassins, but also the out of combat movement speed makes it even easier to roam the side lanes to apply pressure. Kiana is great at joining fights late, as you can easily clean up low health targets, and when it comes to team fighter, ult can easily dictate the outcome of a game. Baron and Dragon Pit are particularly vulnerable to her ultimate as it loops around and hits pretty much everyone who's around there, which is ideal for contesting around those objectives. LeBlanc is just a really powerful pick at the moment and easily blindable. There are counters, but they're not being utilized effectively and she's been able to wreak havoc at higher ranks. LeBlanc is incredibly effective at setting up picks as you can dash in and land a root, which allows her jungler to easily follow up. This threat in the enemy mid laner means LeBlanc can easily gain control of the lane and look to roam to the side lanes and threaten dives. LeBlanc spikes hard in the mid game and once ahead has the burst damage to easily pop squishy targets with pretty limited counterplay. Akshan is a monster at the moment. His dueling power is hard to match and as a result he's often able to snowball the game out of control. Ganking him is incredibly difficult as his E is a great tool to get away when used effectively. Once Akshan has control of mid he can use his W to constantly threaten side lane pressure and he's really hard to track thanks to his infinite stealth. In the later stages, Akshan functions as an AD carry and scales incredibly well. Able to shred targets and should he be able to get a takedown, then he can revive his allies. This is really frustrating to play against, especially when he's able to revive a top laner with TP who can just rejoin the fight. On to AD carries, in the god tier we have Draven, in the S tier we have Ash, Vayne and Ziggs. AD carry saw Varus receive another nerf to tone down the power we've seen him have in pro play. At this point, he's really starting to struggle in a solo queue and his win rate is plummeting. Other than that, we didn't actually get any changes for AD carries on this patch, so let's move on to the highlight picks. Bane's place in the meta comes from ability to handle the short range bruisers who are causing havoc at the moment. The laning phase can be underwhelming due to the fact you don't have any abilities to help push the wave in or trade outside your auto range, but once you start to get items you'll be able to take over games. Bane's presence in a team fight has to be respected and often if a game goes late enough she can single handedly claim victory for a team. Draven is monster strong at the moment, he keeps getting buffed despite already being a solid solo queue pick. He's able to outtrade almost every AD carry in lane on the back of the massive damage boost his axes offer, and if he's able to snowball, he can just two hit squishies. Draven is a volatile pick, as when behind he's underwhelming, and if he's unable to cash in on his passive and lose his stacks, he won't find much value. It does mean he makes the game heavily about him. Often teams will win or lose on the back of Draven being strong or not. Onto support, in the god tier we have Bard and Thresh, and the S tier we have Zillion and Senna. For support, we saw Soraka get a nerf to her ult healing, as he's really been performing well on the back of the changes from last patch. Sona got a base armor reduced, which does make a pretty big difference when she's already so squishy. Outside of that, we didn't see too many changes, so again, onto our highlight picks. Rakan is just super popular in high low due to the fact he's a very safe blind, able to play a more defensive lane or aggressive. You're able to roam effectively and contribute in skirmishes, and in the later stages of the game, you offer reliable engage that's hard to avoid or outplay. Rakan's benefit heavily from a lot of his counters being nerfed to the point it isn't so difficult to match up into them in lane and often in solo queue having a reliable form of engage allows you to pick off isolated targets in a disorganized team or start fights on your own terms. Nami has flourished mostly due to the change of solution. He now deals bonus damage to the next two autos after being buffed or healed and this syncs really well with Nami particularly her E. Considering the damage Lucian gets is around 20 pit auto at level 1 and then you add in Nami's E damage and you can out trade any lane in the game at levels 1 to 3. Nami Lucian is incredibly powerful and often drawn bans simply because of the kill threat in lane and snowball potential. Lucian using E double auto Q with Nami's E is often enough to 100 to 0 a target. On top of that Nami's have been running electrocute with Lucian as when he does his combo it's quick enough to proc your electrocute thanks to your E and deal a ton of extra damage. Moon's changes have pushed him into a really powerful spot as a support. The fact you can Q R Q and keep a target locked down for such a long time is suffocating. Your laning is powerful on the back of your two charges of Q, providing good lockdown and engage potential, and with your ultimate you're really effective in skirmishes and teamfights. A really powerful strategy is to rush Anathema's chains. If you place this on a high priority target, it'll reduce their tenacity, and the critical reason this is important is it increases the CC of your Q and R combined to over 3 seconds, which is the same duration as your Q lockout. That way you can Q, R, Q without leaving any gap for the opponent to flash or dash away. This will get messed up if the target has Merc Treads or Tenacity and Runes or Cleanse, but it's still a great way to extend your CC and often the enemy AD carry isn't in a position to take passive Tenacity and if their Cleanse is burned, you can easily remove their ability to play. And that's it for this patch. Hopefully this has been helpful in getting you up to speed on the meta. If you're interested in seeing the full low elo and high low lists in one place, including C and D tiers, then head on over to mobileleaks.gg where you can get even more info including counters, builds, tips, combos and more. 
everything has just been revamped so be sure to check it out see you next time and thanks for watching